Welcome back to another creative hangout with me, Elaine. The past five days has been super rainy and dreary outside, so I needed something fun to do indoors. Bookbinding has been something that I wanted to do for a long time, so I'm excited to finally make this watercolor sketchbook with you. Day one of this rainy week, I ordered several things from Amazon and then gathered the last bit I needed from a local art supply store. I trekked out in the rain with an umbrella and rain boots. I know, I was very determined to craft. For this project, we will need an awl. It's the pointy tool or a thumbtack, needle, minus a furniture needle, wax thread, scissors, watercolor paper, chipboard, Wrapping papers, plural, because you'll want a paper for your book cover and then one for the back side of your cover. pH neutral glue, ruler, and then also these are kind of optional because I didn't have them, a bone folder, and a thimble, but everything else I think you'll need. First, I'm gonna fold my watercolor paper in half and reinforce these folded edges with the back end of my scissors. This is where you'll need a bone folder if you have one. Maybe I should get one because that looked a bit dangerous. So we will be folding five signatures. A signature is basically a stack of folded paper. And so in one of my signatures, I will be adding four pieces of folded paper. Next, we will be adding points on the folded edge of the signatures, three points, one inch apart from the top and from the bottom of the paper. So total, we will have six points. I recommend that you measure the distance in between to make sure that they are all the same on all your signatures. Now let's poke holes on all the signatures so that it makes it easier for us to sew through later. Next, let's make the book cover. I placed one of my folded pages uh, onto the chipboard and measured two pieces just a little larger um, than the folded pages. And this chipboard is actually a repurposed backing from an art print that I purchased. I support repurposing old things when you can. It won't be as hard as the chipboard you buy for book covers, but I'm okay with that. I got this pretty pressed flower paper from my local art store. They have hangers full of handmade paper and they're just all so cool. Okay, after cutting the book cover paper about an inch larger than the chipboard all around, I'm ready to glue it down now with some pH neutral glue. I remember my high school art teacher telling us that pH neutral glue is important for book binding because over time it doesn't yellow and it remains flexible. So I'm just gonna apply this glue down onto the wrapping paper with a brush. Then I'm gonna press my chipboard into it and I'll fold the edges over. Before we glue down the edges, let's cut triangles on the corners to make mitered edges, but be careful not to cut too much or else you'll have a gap there. Now I'm going to brush down more glue on the edge and just fold the cover paper over. If you have a bone folder, then you can use it to press against the edges to make your edges more crisp and pristine. Now we will add a piece of paper to cover the back side of the chipboard. You can use another decorative paper. I am using a piece of gold paper I had left over from another project, and I just cut it in half hoping it'll fit, but I think if you measure the sheet to be at least quarter inch smaller all around, then it should be fine. I put my book covers under a stack of books to let them dry. Now after your book covers are dry, you want to poke holes into the same places as the signatures. So I'm measuring half an inch from the edge and then I'm poking the same holes as the signatures. That's three from the top and then three from the bottom. Now are you ready for the fun and hard part? Let's choose a wax thread and double thread our needle and knot it. 
The reason why we're using wax thread is because it will tangle less and make the binding process much easier. But the threads will still tangle a little. Um, it's just gonna be easier to untangle it because it's waxed. We'll start sandwiching the signatures together one at a time in between the book covers. It is helpful to keep your signatures in the same order as you stack them in case your measurements are a little off. We will be doing the Coptic binding method, which was according to Wikipedia, employed by early Christians in Egypt called the Copts. How cool is that, right? It was used as early as 2nd century AD, and now, 18,000 years later, we are still using it. Okay, let's get binding. For our first stitch, you'll sew through one signature and into the cover, then tighten your thread and loop your needle around and inside the same hole and pull through. And you'll see a knot on the other side, and then we'll just do that again. Needle through the signature, back into the cover, tighten it, loop back in to make that knot. Now let's do that until we reach the end. You know, one of the reasons I make YouTube videos is to force me to do all the arts and crafts projects that I've been meaning to do, but I always say I don't have time for. With me feeling accountable to post at least every two weeks, I have to tackle one of these long-awaited projects. And so I'm so happy I got to make this sketchbook with you and finally be able to use it. Now, once you reach the last hole of your signature, you'll want to stack the next signature on top. You'll do the same stitch, except after you loop it, instead of returning it back into the same hole, you'll return the needle into the next signature. And then you'll keep going. Instead of looping it through the cover, you're now looping it through the previous signature. And now you just keep going until you reach the last signature. I'll show you what happens when you reach the end of your thread but once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty fun. Okay, now that I'm at the end of my thread, about six inches left, I'll tie it off and tuck the thread underneath one of the strings. I'll come back and clean up this thread tail later. For now, I'm just going to re-thread and keep going. I feel like with bookbinding, once you get into the groove, it's hard to stop and you just need to finish it up. So I was on such a roll that I sewed on all my signatures without the cover and had to fold a six signature. So don't do what I did. Save your last signature to be bound with your cover. Now stack your cover and last signature, align the holes, so from the last stitch, instead of returning it into the next signature, push it through the cover, make it come out between the cover and the signature, then loop the needle around the last signature's knot and come out once again before going back into the new signature from the spine. Now onto the next hole and you'll do that whole sequence again. I hope my video helps even if my explanation didn't, but you'll get it. Just through the signature, loop it, then through the cover, loop it again, and then back through the signature. Now repeat all the way to the end. You'll want to do your binding nice and tight. Mine is kind of loose, so don't follow what I did. Follow what I say. It seems God turned off the lights, so it's time to finish up. Let's tie off the thread and tuck it away. And voila, your new watercolor sketchbook is ready for use. Enjoy. I'll list all my materials below that I use in case you want to use the same supplies that I did. And remember to subscribe for future creative hangouts. <laughs>